All right, we're thrilled to be here with you today and uh, thrilled to talk about Kimmel, his super cool project, his DAO. Uh, we just talked about it in the main room. How many of you were in the main room and heard our presentation there? Well, wow, that's cool. So a fair number of you have, some haven't. We want to go a little deeper in this session because you're the pros. You're the DAO house and you want to get an issue. So we're going to start off both Kimmel and me with some introductory remarks, but you have an invitation. Ten people can line up behind that microphone and after we do the intro thing, we just want to hear three short things. Your name, your project, and the question you have in 10 words or less. So just a tight question. We want to get 10 words or less, guys. Come on. <laughs> Look, you're taller than me. You're big guy with a cowboy hat. You're going to be the enforcer, OK? Well, we just want to, we want to, get, we want to make this uh, uh, back and forth so we'll get questions from you guys. Um, and we're, we're not going to answer everyone. We're just going to pick a few out of those 10 to answer. Yeah, and we'll kind of weave we've other other answers in through the session so as time allows we'll engage more but so if you want going to have some questions go ahead and get up at that mic so the the title of the session is the starfish moment DAOs and the reinvention of philanthropy so i'm the starfish guy here today and he's the DAO man uh and michael casey asked me to do this interview because of a book i wrote called the starfish and the spider which is a handbook on decentralized organizations that's been used all over the world it's in 15 languages or 17 uh, countries it's in but i thought we'd start with our personal stories first because i think what's important in a DAO or anything else is what's in our heart i mean what is our intention about what we're creating and Kimball and I learned when we were talking together about this session that his life and my life both changed in New York City on 9-11. And it directly shaped our, our life missions and what we're working on and why we're here and the starfish in the Dow. So on my side, I was in New York City. I had started a financial software company when I was 24. It did derivatives finance and took it public. And so I had 15 customers in those towers in the World Trade Center. So on 9-11, when I had the shocking experience of looking at those towers after the two jets had gone in, I saw them burning. And I was trying to figure out which of my friends and the people I know are below the fire lines because they got a really good shot at survival. And who's above the fire line? That's going to be tough. And I've never felt so helpless in my life. I wanted to go. I wanted to get there and help. But I realized, like, you can't get there. They're going to shut down the subways and the roads. and, and uh, so I realized there's only one thing that I could do to help. So I dropped my bags. I was traveling, dropped my bags, closed my eyes, and I prayed for those people. I prayed to God. I said, please relieve their suffering or reduce their suffering or save their souls. But please, this is a horrific thing, Lord. Please take care of these people. I didn't really want that right now, but we'll take care of it. Um, and I had an incredible experience. Um, and the following words came to me that have guided my life ever since. And the first part of those words, I think, apply to all of us. And it was a very clear message. And it was, it's a small world. It's a fragile world. And no one is safe until everyone is safe. And you are called to serve the peace. And you know, small world, fragile world, got it, easy, buy that. But no one's safe until everyone's safe. That's a heavier lift. I mean, that's harder than getting to Mars. I mean, it's a tough problem. Um, but it changed my life, and so I've been dedicated to serving peace ever since. And so I dropped all my business projects except one where we just raised $37 million, and I was the chairman of this company. I wasn't going to walk away from that. We were doing one of the first privacy VPN platforms in the world. And um, I started creating a peace network of CEOs. And I modeled it, chose to model it explicitly on Al-Qaeda because I said, they've been so successful and disruptive. I want to counter what they're doing. Why don't I copy them until I can figure out how to do something better? So we built a cell-based organization with cells of CEOs, typically 10 to 12 each, often across uh, war, war zones or divides, Israel-Palestine forum circle, an India-Pakistan circle that helped bring the peace between India and Pakistan, by the way, in that Indo-Pak war. It was our group of those 12 CEOs doing the symbolic actions that got the war stopped. And the network took off. And um, we learned how decentralized networks work by studying Al-Qaeda and by building our own with that move. And then we realized we need to share this knowledge. So we did. So we wrote a book called The Starfish and the Spider. It's a handbook. Tells you how to design decentralized organizations, the laws, concepts, how they compete with centralized 
organizations, how you do competition, even how you analyze in a scale. So anyway, and it changed my life because that book led the Director of National Intelligence of the US and the President to appoint me to run collaboration across all the type, top cyber centers of the US government. Centers like NSA, FBI, DOD, et cetera. I was a, my protocol rank was two and a half star general. The head of the NSA was the only higher rank person in the system. He was a three star. And I, and I used exactly these principles in the book of decentralization. So I applied them there. I saw it work in government. Um, and I used it then to, in ICANN, I got elected to be the CEO of ICANN, which is a global internet governance body for the domain name system, which has had tens of thousands of people involved, use the concepts again. And it's been used in tons of companies, tons of companies in, in every sector. And so it's a thrill to be here at the decentralized festival. So that's the story of the Starfish and that framework we'll be touching on. And Kimball read the book this week, but Kimball, let's hear your story on 9-11 and what drives you. Yeah, no, I, um, it's actually amazing to me that, uh, um, that, uh, 9-11 was caused by Al-Qaeda, and they are essentially a decentralized autonomous organization. So I, I, I lived very close to the World Trade Center. I was woken up to the sounds of the plane hitting the building. It was that close. Uh, was ran out uh, met with my wife and I got to Canal Street. So, so the first one fell. Uh, second one fell at Union Square. And, and really, it just broke reality for me and sent me on a whole different path. I was, I, I was a trained chef, classically trained chef, but I worked primarily in technology. And uh, it put me on a path towards something that I learned from cooking for the firefighters. I ended up cooking for them for six weeks. It was just an amazing privilege. And to see the community that was formed uh, from, from such a tragedy with these, with these firefighters where we'd feed them together, we'd have community amongst the cooks and the chefs, and the firefighters would come in and you'd see them connect with each other. And um, of course, that was caused by Al-Qaeda, and now uh, I see similar community being formed in, in Web3. And honestly, community is the superpower. You know, there's a lot of people talk about their coin or their whatever. And actually, what I'm really seeing is extraordinary deep relationships being built between people from around the world. And their, their, their rights are protected in, in whatever uh, uh, DAO they're part of. Where in the case of Big Green Dow, Big Green Dow works on on phil philanthropy. So you can donate to Big Green Dow, and then do Big Green Dow uses a network of of nonprofits. And and if you donate over it and one Ethereum, you get to vote as well. Uh, donors and uh, nonprofits vote where funding goes. And we have uh, a treasury of about six million dollars. We have to give away a minimum of uh, twenty percent, maximum thirty percent every quarter. So that's real money. And um, this quarter, we are, uh, just by the rules of the DAO, able to add 86 nonprofits. And we're going to give them some funding. They, they will appreciate that. But the power is the community, the amazing conversations that start to be had when, you are, when your rights are preserved in, your, in, the, in the DAO. You can be honest. You can be open. And um, I can't tell you how many amazing conversations I've had with, with incredible, incredible, powerful superstar people that are, that are nonprofits or donors about how does human nature work when you're giving money away? How, how do we know this will make better decisions? Um, or they might actually have a real strong point to make, and they can. They can make it. And it's very, uh, it's very open. It's very honest. And frankly, there's a lot of frustration with these hierarchical systems, a lot of frustration. And uh, they get to share that without fear of someone like me uh, saying, oh, we're going to remove you from the DAO. Actually, we can't. And so uh, we have term limits. We have other things like that. But, but not, not anything that I could do. It's simply built, built on the rules of the DAO. So anyway, I, I just want to say, and of course, we see it in this room, the community is the superpower. And 9-11 taught me that and sent me on a path. And 20 years later, look at me. I'm doing a DAO. Here, here. <laughs> Terrific. We got a few people behind the mic. Please, let's, let's hear it. We're not, I say we're not going to answer them right now. I want to capture the thoughts, and then we'll weave them in the conversation. Great. Okay, sound good? So, Jay, please. Great. Thanks for being here today. I'm Jay Kramer, uh, co-founder of CareDrop DAO, philanthropic DAO, focused on education in New York City. And my question is, how do you balance the decision of having a hierarchical leadership structure in order to receive 501c3 certification for your organization versus the traditional DAO ethos of decentralization and whether there are any viable business uh, org structures you can We see. got it. I'm going to call it the 501c3 question. Beautiful. 
Next, please. Amanda Compton, Emphasis Consulting, Global Oil and Gas Distribution. I'm here because I want to hear about the equitable distribution of resources, both food and energy. All right, equitable distribution and DAOs. Uh, my name is James, I'm with Experience Club, and my question is about what would you say to someone who has a huge mouthpiece to the global community who mostly just uses their who mostly just uses their position to promote a dog coin. <laughs> um, all right, uh, dog coin, uh, Doge, I thought it was Doge, but you know, I probably missed something. Next, please. Hi, my name is Peter Broman Davis. I'm forming a DAO analytics company. Okay. Um, I'm really interested in the fact that, you know, the DAO was formed in 2016. Uh, it's been six years since the DAO was formed, and yet we still see a lack of sophistication in terms of hierarchical structures and power distributions. What is gonna cause the spark that actually advances DAOs into an efficient, and actually decentralized permissionless organization. Beautiful, what's gonna spark the revolution? That'll be fun. Next. Good afternoon, my name's Antoinette Marie. I'm from Heifer International. We are a um, agrarian intervention INGO. We've been around for 75 years. We work on the innovation team. I'm here with my colleague Elizabeth from Malawi. Um, we're deploying decentralized reputation systems for smallholder farmers so that they can gain access to affordable credit. Um, but what I'd like to ask to the both of you is how you can um, help with change management for large institutions like Heifer to begin to adopt some of these practices around decentralized philanthropy. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you. So my name is Raf wow, Rafa. Uh, I'm the founder and CEO of Ribbon DAO. It's a given protocol, giving DAO. We have 100,000 monthly donors right now. And my question is, how do you bring new donors to charity? How you bring real dollars to charity? More dollars. More dollars. Yeah. Show us the money. That's the show, show, show me the money question. All right. Next. Hello, my name is Neil Singer and my project is called What Earned When. My question is, is there anything unique to DAOs that adds friction or slows down the bad aspects of human nature? Thank you. Okay, that's a great governance question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rachel Chung. I'm a co-founder of Cosmos. We're a Web3 venture DAO supporting women of creators of color in the space. Right. Um, and I also work in fundraising. So my question is, how do you combat competition and actually promote collaboration between grantees um, when generally in philanthropy there's such a scarcity mindset um, and a feeling of competition that comes from the over-reliance on philanthropy? That's a great one for, you got the right man. We're going to take two more questions, okay, because we're going to start rolling on answers. So please. One, one more and then one behind. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Arnold. I'm a student at Columbia. Uh, Elon recently said that he had a super bad feeling about the economy, uh, given that inflation's at 40-year highs and the print today for CPI is larger than expected. I was kind of curious about your take on the macro situation and how that might affect crypto and DAOs. Yeah, we might defer that to Jerome Powell or <laughs> we're talking about it, whichever. Thank you. Thank you, Arnold. <laughs> Hi, I'm Akash, I'm 19, uh, and I've been fascinated with the ideas of personal growth and mental fitness, and I'm working on a startup about that. Um, my question is, uh, how would you say blockchain technology can help individuals become a better version of themselves? Improve, make better people through better engagement or whatever it might be. Good, terrific. So, you know, uh, Kibbles, uh, maybe a segue here. I, I like that 501c3 question because it relates to, you know, you're the CEO of this more centralized organization, the parent, and you've created the, da the, uh, the DAO. Let's talk about that. So Big Green has been around since 2011. It's a 501c3. We've raised probably $100 million towards school gardens in America. We uh, have built 650 outdoor classrooms, beautiful school gardens that teach kids science through the growing of food. Absolutely top-down, hierarchical, I'm in charge. And um, uh, the DAO, what we did was we, we have a DAO. You should read the light paper, dao.biggreen.org, uh, free access to that. Um, no minimum donation as well to join the Discord. I think that's also where the most interesting stuff is. The, um, uh, the 501c3 receives the money. We then provide a tax deduction to the donor. It is in restricted funds, and the DAO gives instructions to the 501c3 when it, when it wants to give, give money away, and then the 501c3 will then send the check. Where we actually play a role is, we, th that's just sort of administration. Where we actually play a role is we, we do have the right to prevent a nonprofit from joining the, the, the DAO. That's, that's one place we can prevent. So for example, we have 400 nonprofits applying. Out of those 400, 395 will be approved. 
One will be outside of the United States. One will be not in food justice. One will be, we just don't feel good about this. You know, something that, that would come under scrutiny from the Internal Revenue Service. We are an American 501c3 that basically administrates and prevents fraud in the Dow. But it's really a nuclear option. So if we were to really try and do anything, it would blow up the Dow. So it's more, more of a backup. So in a way, you've tried to optimize the design, the governance, to comply with US IRS guidelines. Yep. You have to do that. But otherwise, be as open as you can be. Yep. And, and but do a little quality control, maybe to avoid abuse or wonkiness or whatever, because you don't want to lose your 501c3. Well, one of the things that the Dow is fighting us on, and I think it's to fight is the right way in a good way, they are fighting for the right for nonprofits to join that do not have 501c3 status. And that is a real problem in America. If you do not have 501c3 status, you can't provide tax deductions. But we are actually allowed to give money to a non-501c3 recipient. We give money to teachers all the time through our grant making, our traditional grant making. Um, so that's a, that's a fight. We're like, wait a minute, that's going to potentially make us break the law if, if this goes wild and we're going to set the tone. But we are actually agreeing to, to doing it. But we're being very, very careful because we need to make sure that our donors are protected if they make a donation. And this goes to something for, sure. fraudulent. And the Dow has to be safe. And the parent entity has exactly. to be and, safe. And uh, it, the IRS would, would actually not just come after us, they'd come after the donor as well. Sure. Now, this almost relates to the friction question that came up as well. Someone said, you know, what friction has, does the Dow add in the decision, in the, in the process? You've mentioned a lot of things that are better because of more participation and inclusion. Are there any new points of friction or different points of friction than you experienced in the, the parent entity? I think there's actually a, a lot of friction in a Dow, and I think it creates community, and that's why it's good. But the friction, for example, is in this, um, in this quarter, we will have, say, 400 nonprofits come in. If I'm in charge, I pick 150 of them, pick 85 or whatever, 86 this, this quarter, and just say, yep, these ones, there's no friction. With, with this quarter, they, the, the nonprofits will get onto the Discord for free. They can promote themselves, share, share why they should receive funding. It's a two-week voting process. So we're also not allowing it all to be done in one day. So it's two weeks. You can go back and change your vote. So actually, it's, an, it's a ton of friction. But it's all designed to build community. So you make your vote. It's all using quadratic funding. So you're, you can't pl play favorites too easily. Quadratic funding enables you to, to put full funding towards a nonprofit you love, but if you try and put too much of your votes towards it, each vote becomes worth a lot less. And the reason why that's great is if you go back into the Discord and, cl and get people to vote on the nonprofit you care about, you will then get more funding to that nonprofit or more likely they would be chosen this quarter. So the, the friction is all about creating community. And uh, I also love that there's this um, human nature side where we are trained from birth to, to uh, be anxious about control. Uh, every single person in this room is used to pretending in their mind that they control what's going on around them. And no, we don't really control it, but we, 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 we pretend we do. And this is a DAO that is progressively decentralizing. The people that joined for the first time, six people, got to choose the next round of, of nonprofits, which happened last quarter. But when they give money away, they are also giving a vote away. So six people chose 10. Now 19 people, because we've added three donors, I'm one of them. 19 people will then choose up to 86. And now the votes will change, because now we'll have over 100 voters for next quarter. So you're giving money away, which is cool and feels great. It feels powerful. But every vote you give out is a vote that takes power away from you. Yeah. And that experiment, it, it's a, when I say experiment, the whole thing is an experiment. But watching that happen, even when I felt it myself, of giving up control, it's a, it's, you have to override human nature. Right, it's a visceral thing, visceral, right? Yeah. We, we feel safety when yeah. we have control, right? We're exactly. losing that safety, and we have to trust in the crowd, or trust in the, the process. I mean, for me, especially, I've been a CEO of many companies my whole life. I, I live and breathe control, and, and it's been successful for me. And there's, I'm very excited about Big Green Down. Don't get me wrong, I think it's going very well. But there's real fear inside me that, that this is going to go badly, and I can't do anything about it. Yeah, for sure. I think uh, just a couple observations here. I think it's really cool the way you're basically scaling into the decentralization, kind of starting with a trusted circle of the six, 
expanding to a, people, a, a circle they trust, and it goes onward, but it's basically, it's distributing power, but you're basically scaling into communities. You're not saying, day one, everyone on the planet Earth can come here. And I think that's good because it builds more cohesion, right, and builds more relationships. And a key thing in decentralized networks is a part of the architecture is actually the ethos. The values of the network is part of the architecture. We learned that from Al-Qaeda. Okay? When I wrote the book, I was having a discussion with a, a friend of mine, a billionaire in Pakistan, who does unbelievable charitable works and business. And, and he pounded into my head, he says, Rod, because I was talking about Al-Qaeda as an organization. And he said, Rod, Al-Qaeda is not an organization. I said, well, then what? He said, it's an ideology. And, and you can't kill the organization. It's like a spider. If you cut off the head of a spider, it dies. But if you cut off the arm of a starfish, you just get a four-armed starfish and a new starfish. Starfish can regenerate from one arm. So if you cut five arms off, you can get five new starfish. So what he said, and I had to get my head around that. My God, Al-Qaeda, it's not an organization. It's an ideology. And it's got different champions. The architect, by the way, of Al-Qaeda, most people don't know, it's, it's uh, 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 Zawahiri. Zawahiri out of the Egyptian uh, Brotherhood in, in Egypt was the primary architect. Bin Laden was the champion. So we talk about in the book, you have a catalyst that designs a network or architecture, and you have the champion. Well, bin Laden was their super champion. Um, and we saw you cut the head off. What do you get? ISIS. <laughs> Al-Qaeda, the peninsula, et cetera. But so I think what's cool is the way you're scaling the decentralization. And I think that a discussion thing here would be interesting, too, is talk about kind of the trust modeling and, and building a trustless system, or I call it trustful yeah. system and community. I think that's a really good point. It, it's trustless in the sense that which is very, very important, that no one can take your rights away from you. So the smart contract's written. Uh, we actually do have our ideology. We believe that growing food changes lives. It improves your nutrition security. It improves your mental health. Gets you out into nature. It opens your eyes to the weather volatility of climate change. It changes your life to grow food. And we really believe that. And it is written in our constitution. In addition, we believe that in this DAO, the it's it, critically important that one person cannot accumulate power. And that is written down, and we, we work very hard in the governance to, to ensure that. But by, by making sure that everyone has their rights, they know their voting token, they know if they do X, Y, and Z, they'll, this will happen, or they do something else, something else will happen, um, they, they can create, they, they can be very honest. And uh, honesty, I believe, builds community, because you're, you're, uh, you're not... Uh, you're just not holding back, you know, and uh, some of these people really, really, really disagree with each other. And if you think about governance, I bet you every single person in this room has a different opinion. And when you have a DAO with an open, uh, uh, obviously you have the contracts to protect your rights, but also an uh, 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 encouraging open debate about how this should be governed. I mean, one of our amazing committee members is a, is a Cochiti Native American tribe member and the way her tribe is run is just nothing like an American government system. And we go back and forth and debate on which is better. Well, that's actually not, I mean, that's a fun debate. You trust me, that's great. But what do we now want to learn to apply to a new governance system? Yeah. We can be really honest about it. I want to pick up on, if I can, they put the slide up of the scale of decentralization. So um, this is one of the t like 10 tools in the book you can use for looking at a project or a company or effort. So if you assume centralization is on the left, extreme centralization. So think North Korea, it'd be way over in the left, right? And think of total chaos. It's beyond the right border, right? Decentralized does not mean random. It's not random. It has structure. It has to have architecture to work. So I'd say, and, and so Big Green is a traditionally centralized uh, nonprofit. Big Green Dow is very decentralized, and you're pushing it even further to the to the right side towards decentralized. And Ethereum and Bitcoin are incredibly decentralized, right? And and what you want to find in your project design is it's the the, the it. It's not that you were decentralized or not. It's a scale. You want to find the design that works, that's effective to the goals you want to achieve with the community. And what's beautiful about what you've done is the voting mechanisms, the ability to throw people off committees if you need to, bring people in out. There's the mechanisms. Even Here, I can't throw them off, but no, no, no. the community the can vote. The, commu the community can and revise the charter, et cetera. So it's, it's got the governance mechanisms to evolve. Um, but I think. I'd like you to talk about the revolution. As someone brought up, you know, we, the first DAO was in 2016, and there were some problems with that, in part because it wasn't architected like your light paper. You've benefited from that. And the gentleman talked about, well, 
it's 20, you know, been 2016, six years. I'm pretty excited about the progress, but you've got a dream of revolutionizing philanthropy. Let's talk about that big dream because it also answers the question of how to get more money into the philanthropic world that someone else asked. Yeah, that's a great question. How do you get more money into the philanthropic world? Well, I, I will say that in America, uh, this is unique to America, there is a lot of incentives to donate to charity. A lot of people don't appreciate how strong those incentives are. It's virtually the same as paying tax. Um, it's like you get a slightly better deal if you give the money to the government, and otherwise, you, if you give it to a nonprofit, it's about the same deal. So actually, getting that message across to a lot more people is, is, is really useful. I, I would say that what we're doing at Big Green Dow is focusing on doing good things. And while that might sound obvious, um, I'm a believer and I've seen it even in the hardest times. We're in a difficult bear market right now with across the board. Uh, if you do good things, the, the, the pe people with, with resources, whether it's time, money, or, or, or talent, will find ways to help you. And uh, when I look at the voting system that we're working on this quarter, we're going to use quadratic funding with Othello and Gitcoin and learning as much as possible. I look at the technology and go, man, this stuff is so primitive. It's so, um, it's so many things can go wrong, but we're also not paying for it. It's part of the system. It's, right. We're exactly. part of the community. That's part of innovation, right? Part of the innovation. And so we're like, okay, let's give this a try. And uh, Some of those rocket ships may not exactly. make it. <laughs> Sometimes uh, R&D is expensive. And, um, uh, and so we are absolutely open to taking risks. We understand that this is an experimental phase. But if it works, which I think it's going to work very, very well, but if it works, uh, I believe it could take on uh, the whole Dow philanthropic sector, not just food justice, what I work on, but every sector. Uh, it could take on 20, 30, 40 percent of philanthropy in America, potentially much more than that internationally. And uh, I would just not rush it either. So we are very vocally telling the philanthropic world out there that we are an experiment. Yeah. We are not trying to tell people we know what's going on. We are just trying to do good things. That's a beautiful, hum humble, humility approach you have of it's a three-stage project or three phases, and you're in phase zero. I mean, it's very humble. It's beautiful to do experiments and evolution. That's the nature of working with decentralized groups. Can we do a try an experiment with the audience here in, sure. in engagement? I want to try something. I've done it at World Economic Forum, DeVos, other places. I've done it with 70 people in a room. We've got a little more, but this is going to take real cooperation from the room. Can that mic move, by the way? Can the mic move that's on the stand? Can someone pull it off? Um, in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to go around the room to every person. I want to hear one word of how you feel about the conversation we've just had. Great. And then we'll do a wrap-up. How's that? OK, we're going to start right here with you. Excited. Engaging. Inspired. Complicated. Enlightening. Limitless. Inspiring. Shocked. Okay. Let's go on this side. Jim, you. Yeah. Uh, amazing. Amazing in line. Refreshing. Refreshing. Complex. 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 Captivated. Captivated. Late, young lady. Resilient. Resilient. Thank you. Innovative. Innovative. Courageous. Courageous. Complex. Complex. Change. Change. Confused. Yeah, me too. Uh, <laughs> next. Engaged. Engaged. Insightful. What kind of you gentlemen with the hat here? Optimistic. Optimistic. Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Thoughtful. Thoughtful. Democratic. Democratic. Revolutionary. Revolutionary. Complicated. Complicated. Hopeful. Hopeful. Complex. 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 Refreshed. Refreshed. Curious, informed, innovative, hopeful, driven, altruistic. You have the badge behind the sign. Hope, intriguing. Next, optimistic. Why don't you run this? You you run this. You do right. this. Let's start back row, lady lady uh, with the sunglasses. That's you. 
Sure. 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 Ready. Ready. Destiny. Destiny. Good. Food. Good. 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 <laughs> Can't hear you. Innovative. Innovative. Happy. Happy. Inspiring. Shout it out when you're shout in the it back. Out. Shout it out. Lady, yeah, that's you. Lady with the uh, dark hair, put that there. Yep. Oh, okay. Next, you. Uh, curious. 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 Change. <laughs> Nurture. Nurture. Beginning. Begin. Yeah. Inspired. Good guy. Good guy. <laughs> Promising. Hopeful. Hopeful. Big green. Big green. Two words, but good two <laughs> That's words. That's right, good ones. Ambitious. Ambitious. Inspiring. Inspiring. Interesting. Interesting. Transformative. Transformative. Community. Community. Okay. Dreaming. Dreaming. Hopeful. Cool. Correct. Correct. Happy. Happy. Confident. Confident. Smart. 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 Fascinated. Fascinated. Hopeful. Hopeful. And you guys went, right? Great. I think we, we uh, That's awesome. We that's covered great. a lot of the room. So let's get your last shot. I want the, the dream vision of where you see Dow's in 30 years' time. Well, I think that the, the thing I took away from, the, from this crowd right here was inspired, hopeful, curious, and complicated. Um, and uh, take that inspiration and drink from a fire hose of information and learning. And trust me, you will never regret it. It will be a fire hose of information. Every DAO is different. Uh, study those white papers. Uh, if you're going to do a DAO, understand this is complicated and, un and most times irreversible. So don't, don't, uh, don't phone it in. Like you, that, that, that's very hard. But be curious because it's cool. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like this in my lifetime. And um, uh, I am excited to be part of it. And uh, be inspired by the people that will join you in what you end up doing. And do good things. Um, try your best to avoid speculation in whatever you're doing in a DAO, because speculation means you're going to get crushed in a bear market. Uh, focus on doing good things. And uh, the resources, time, talent, and, and financial resources will come here, to you. Here, here. Last exercise. Can I get everybody to stand up? Please stand up. Please, we need to stretch anyway. Can you please give this wonderful human being a round of applause? Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Good fun.